minimally invasive aortic valve surgery, state of art and future directions. Aortic valve disease is the most common cardiovascular disease in the developed countries. Its incidence is likely to increase with age and the aortic valve replacement through a full sternotomy is the conventional approach for the treatment of aortic valve disease. Data reported from the Society of Thoracic Surgeon database have shown a dramatically in hospital mortality reduction from 4% in 1999 to 2.6% 2 in 2006 for isolated AVR. Despite these excellent results, in the last years, minimal invasive AVR has now become an alternative to full sternotomy in order to reduce the invasiveness of the surgical procedure while maintaining the same quality, efficacy and safety of a conventional approach. Definition for minimal invasive AVR. The Society of Thoracic Surgeon Database defines minimal invasive cardiac surgery any procedure not performed with full sternotomy and cardiopulmonary support. The only procedure related to this definition should be represented by TAVI. Nevertheless, in 2008, a scientific statement from the American Heart Association defines minimal invasive cardiac surgery as small chest incision that does not include the full conventional full sternotomy. We will use the latter definition as the term minimal invasive cardiac surgery should not be related to a specific procedure, but rather a philosophy that requires an operation specific strategy aiming to reduce the degree of surgical invasiveness. Compared with conventional surgery, minimal invasive AVR has been shown to reduce postoperative mortality, morbidity, providing faster recovery, shorter hospital stay, and better cosmetic results, as well as less wound infection. Moreover, minimal invasive AVR has shown to improve postoperative respiratory function, reduce postoperative pain, blood loss, blood transfusion, and facilitate reoperation at a later date. Finally, minimal invasive AVR requires less rehabilitation resource and consequently reduction of cost. Therefore, this procedure might especially benefit in high-risk patients undergoing AVR. The most common minimal invasive approach is the partial upper mini sternotomy, followed by the right anterior mini thoracotomy. Other less invasive techniques include a right parasternal approach and the transverse sternotomy. Minimal invasive AVR was first performed through a 10 cm right parasternal approach in 1996 at the Cleveland Clinic Foundation. This technique consisted in removing the second, third and the fourth costal cartilages, sacrificing the right mammary artery. The major limitation of this technique consisted in a high incidence of lung herniation that was cosmetically disfiguring, often requiring a second operation to repair the defect. This approach was soon abandoned in favor of mini sternotomy approach. The mini sternotomy approach represents the most common technique used for minimal invasive AVR. The mini sternotomy is achieved through a 6 to 10 cm midline vertical skin incision, performing a partial J sternotomy at the third or fourth intercostal space, or a V shaped mini sternotomy at the level of the second or third intercostal space. A number of retrospective studies and several reviews have shown that the mini sternotomy can be performed safely without the risk of death or other major complications. 
Several meta-analyses of more than 4,000 patients have demonstrated that a minimally invasive AVR by the way of mini sternotomy is associated with shorter ventilation time, intensive care unit stay, and hospital stay, as well as less blood loss, less blood transfusion, when compared with conventional surgery. However, patients undergoing mini sternotomy have longer cross clamp and cardiopulmonary bypass times. Data reported from these studies have focused mainly on upper mini sternotomy. Few studies have described the potential advantages of minimally invasive AVR using a right thoracotomy approach. In 2011, we reported our first experience with minimally invasive AVR through a right thoracotomy and showed excellent to surgical results in terms of mortality, morbidities, and patient satisfaction. Differently from the mini sternotomy, all patients scheduled for a right thoracotomy should undergo a CT scan without contrast enhancement to evaluate the anatomic relationship among the intercostal space, ascending aorta, and the aortic valve. Patients are suitable for a right thoracotomy if the following criteria are met. 1. At the level of the main pulmonary artery, the ascending aorta is rightward. This means that more than one half of the ascending aorta is located on the right side in respect to the right sternal border. 2. The distance from the ascending aorta to the sternum do not exceed 10 cm. 3. The angle between the midline and the inclination of the ascending aorta should be more than 45 degrees. These are our surgical steps. After performing right thoracotomy or mini sternotomy, we open the pericardium and a percutaneous cannula is inserted through the femoral vein into the right atrium to achieve the venous drainage under transesophageal echocardiographic guidance and Seldinger technique. Afterward, a direct aortic cannulation is performed using flexible cannula. After establishing vacuum-assisted cardiopulmonary bypass, a left ventricular vent is placed through the right superior pulmonary vein. Then, the ascending aorta is clamped and antigrade cardioplegic solution is given into the aortic root or selectively into the coronary ostia. From January 2005 and June 2010, 192 consecutive patients underwent isolated minimally invasive AVR through a right thoracotomy. Exclusion criteria for right thoracotomy were previous cardiac surgery, operation, right-sided pleuritis, and ascending aorta aneurysm. Overall mortality was 1.6%. And the rate of intraoperative conversion was 1.6%. Interestingly, although the cross clamping and cardiopulmonary bypass time were longer compared to the standard approach, the incidence of postoperative atrial fibrillation and blood transfusion were 18% and 16%, respectively. The median of length of stay was 5 days and discharge home was 19%. When we called this patient home, we found that 96% of them were happy with their scar and 95% of them back to normal activities within 4 weeks. The potential advantages of the right thoracotomy approach were demonstrated after comparing patients undergoing conventional surgery. Specifically, 138 patients undergoing right thoracotomy were matched to a full sternotomy group using a propensity score analysis. The overall in hospital mortality was 0.7%, with no difference between the two groups. Minimal invasive AVR 
through right thoracotomy was associated with a lower incidence of post-operative atrial fibrillation, 18% versus 30%, and blood transfusion, 19% versus 34%, when compared to full sternotomy. Moreover, patients in the right thoracotomy group had a shorter ventilation time, 6 hours versus 8 hours, and post-operative length of stay, 5 days versus 6 hours days. Finally, we compared the patient undergoing right thoracotomy versus mini sternotomy. Among 853 patients from January 2005 and December 2011, we were able to compare 251 patients undergoing right thoracotomy versus 155 patients undergoing mini sternotomy. We found that patients receiving a right thoracotomy approach had better outcomes than those receiving mini sternotomy in terms of lower postoperative atrial fibrillation, 19% versus 34%, shorter ventilation time, a medium 7 hours versus 8 hours, and hospital stay 5 days versus 6 days. Although minimal invasive AVR has showed excellent results, there are still criticism regarding this approach. First, minimal invasive AVR is more related to a cosmetic results than better clinical outcomes, as the majority of published studies are retrospective and randomized trials have not showed any potential advantage. However, these randomized trials are empowered and hold. We believe that it will be very difficult to design a prospective randomized trial, as minimal invasive has shown equivalent results compared to full sternotomy, and patients now demand less invasive procedures. The second criticism regarded the morbidity related to peripheral cannulation causing wound infection pseudoaneurysm and neurological events. In order to avoid these complications, our preference is to cannulate the ascending aorta, which allows a more direct and physiological flow. Third criticism regards the cost related to the minimally invasive instrumentations. Although all instruments and devices used for minimally invasive are more expensive, we strongly believe that the less rate of post-operative complications, the shorter hospital stay and the faster recovery translate in less resources in the health system, reducing the costs. Fourth, minimally invasive surgery is more complex and technically challenging, requiring a distinct learning curve. This is related to the deeper operative field, the limited working space for the exposure and implantation of the prosthetic valve, as well as the use of new equipment and the methods. In regard to this problem, we evaluated the effect of a single surgeon's learning curve on clinical outcomes. We found that the patients undergoing right thoracotomy for isolated AVR are not exposed to an increased operative risk during the surgeon's initial experience. Finally, minimal invasive is associated with longer cardiopulmonary and cross clamp time, and these are raised some concerns regarding its safety in elderly and high risk patients because prolonged operative times are well-known risk factors for adverse outcomes after cardiac surgery. This is a limitation of our approach, suggesting that the exposure and the implantation of the prosthetic valves are more challenging than conventional approach. However, we believe that the use of a suturless device will reduce the operative times, facilitating and standardizing this approach. In the recent years, three different sutureless or rapid deployment aortic valves have been introduced in Europe for the use in both conventional AVR and minimal invasive operations. 
these devices are the enable valve system the Percival S valve system and the Intuity valve system. Favorable clinical outcomes with the use of this device have been reported in several studies showing excellent hemodynamics performance. We described the largest case series of patients who underwent minimally invasive AVR through right thoracotomy and mini sternotomy reporting excellent hemodynamic results, postoperative outcomes and the short postoperative times. Specifically, compared with our previous studies of minimally invasive AVR with stented valves, we found a 38% and 40% reduction in the cross clamp and cardiopulmonary bypass time in the right thoracotomy group and 43% and 35% in the mini sternotomy group confirming that suturous valves can facilitate and standardize the surgical procedure. Moreover, we found a very low incidence of parvovalvular leakage, around 1.8%. It has been shown that the significant parvovalvular leakage is associated with the worse outcome. To avoid parvovalvular leakage, using a sutureless valve or fast deployment valves, we strongly recommend removing all the eccentric calcification, creating a complete decalcification of the aortic annulus. Finally, these devices have shown excellent hemodynamic performances. Because of these excellent results, the combination of minimal invasive AVR and sutureless or fast deployment valve may be considered the first treatment option for high-risk operable patients, those patients considered in the grade zone between TAVI and conventional surgery. However, a prospective randomized trial is required to confirm our hypothesis. In conclusion, minimal invasive AVR through right thoracotomy or mini sternotomy is a safe procedure associated with excellent postoperative outcomes. The use of sutureless or fast deployment valves will facilitate the minimal invasive approach, standardizing the procedure and reducing operative times. Finally, minimal invasive AVR and sutureless and fast deployment valve might be considered an alternative to TAVI procedure for high-risk operable patients Finally, this perfect marriage will decrease further the mortality and morbidities. Thank you very much for your attention.